this morning. So, Father, we thank you so much for this day. Father, thank you that, uh, that you have brought us all here together safely, Father God. We thank you that... Uh, Father, we get to do this. We get to be here together. We get to hear your word, Father God. We get to lift up our praises to you, Father. We just thank you for that. We want to thank you for the fellowship that you provide through uh, friendships with other believers, Father God. Thank you that uh, you have taught us that iron sharpens iron, so one brother sharpens another. So we thank you for that, that we have the opportunity to just be here together, to grow, to learn, Father God, and to serve one another. Father, we want to pray for the service. We ask that you would be with Pastor as he uh, leads us in the in the exploration of your word. Father God, I pray that you would open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us. Father, I pray that we would be changed by it today. Father God, I pray that we would not just hear what you have to say to us, but that we would put it into practice in our lives. Father God, I pray that we would walk. Uh, by the Spirit and not by our flesh, Father God, I pray that you would just um, open our spiritual ears to hear today, Father God. Father, we pray that uh, that you would just be present here. Send your Holy Spirit, Father God, that you would be here for every area of everything that we do, Father God. Father, we don't want to move forward and we're going to move forward with you. So we just love you, we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go, girls. Being invaded. <laughs> Brother in Christ, all the way there, and that itself was a blessing. 
And we got there, we, uh, we turned to work, and when I say we turned to work, it's mostly Henry working. Uh, so we got to watch Henry work. Uh, yeah, it, uh, okay, so uh, I staged that. <laughs> Someone said, "There, we're not. We weren't working for God. We were working with God. Yeah. And you won't know that feeling until you until you participate in that. Right. So I encourage you to, to put the excuses aside because once you go, your excuses will be why you can't stay. Um, and I'm looking forward to the next trip." Okay, I'm going to probably start from the beginning. It may take a few minutes to go through this. Well, you better start the time. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, when we were there two weeks ago, where he talked, he took me through this building and asked me, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And my first thought was, man, y'all haven't had any carpet in here yet. Everything was patched and put together and bubble gum and whatever you like, you know. It was a mess. So I um, remember we looking at this and I was talking to Granny and the Lord just moved it on my heart that you need to come back and you need to finish this mess. Because she told me the last bathroom they had built took 11 years for these volunteers to complete it. And I said, oh my God, we're not going to take that long. I think we can do it in a week. So I come back and into the house and I go look at the scheduling book and it was only the 15th was the only time that she had an opening she could put us in. So uh, I told the wife and of course she was, oh my God, we can't go back. I've got all this to do. You know? And uh, like David, he was afraid and Henry had to get permission from his boss. So I had to just schedule this for myself. And uh, the Spirit just kept moving me and moving me. And everything that uh, He did, the devil did the opposite. I was in a spiritual battle probably two weeks on this thing. And right before we left, He brought me to a verse that uh, in Ephesians 6 and 10, it told me to put on the whole armor of God so we could battle the devil. And that was it from the beginning. We loaded up on Sunday morning. I had vertigo or something. I never had it before then. That I was dizzy. Never been dizzy in my life. And of course, I didn't tell anybody because they're going to tell me, oh, we can't go. We can't we stay here. So we drove to Columbus probably uh, before it cleared up. So that's how, how long the devil fought me on that. And then everything else that, that had come along, you know. We got in there, start tearing things out, and Granny B said, I want it this way. We, we tried to convince her this is a better way of doing it. And she said, okay, okay, I'll do it y'all's way, because I've already got a vision how I want it to end up. And I said, I think we can work with your vision and, and doing it the right way. So $900 later, we, we come on Monday morning and put cabinets in, and we bought tile, we bought ceiling bands. Of course, Henry forgot his air compressor. We had to buy an air compressor. <laughs> and uh, all the things that we went through. Then on Monday night, Granny B wakes us up. She says, oh, don't they take me to the emergency room? I think my appendix is going. So we, we go down and start out to the emergency room. She said, told me to take a ride on veterans here. And she said, get in the left-hand lane. So I get in the left hand lane, I, I knew it looked strange, I said, I've got two yellow lines here. And she says, uh, you're in the turning lane. But okay, just, just go up here and turn about the Taco Bell. So that was a normal turn, but my, my landmark was uh, the DQ. <laughs> it was the same street, but 
But she, she told us all stuff like that, and we get in there into the emergency room. And she was probably the only one, well, I'll take it back, there's one other guy that had a legitimate reason to be there. Everybody else in there was, was people with kids with coughs. And we spent till probably 3 o'clock getting her checked in, and doctors looking at her, did CAT scans and all kind of stuff. They tell us, oh, we're going to ship around to the, probably a life slider. But that didn't happen. She called us an hour later and said, you need to bring me clothes. I don't have any clothes. All the stuff she gathered up before she left, we had to buy her and bring her clothes. And, and so we go back and there was a little nurse there from her church. And they asked her, Granny, what are you doing in here? And she said, well, my stomach hurts. So uh, we went through this process, and we went back home and fixed breakfast because it's about six o'clock by that time. And they finally got Granny on the road, and she went three hours by ambulance. And she said it's the roughest ride she ever had in her life when she was strapped down in the ambulance. She said every bit of that ambulance was hard. She said it was stainless steel and wood. And she asked him, "Are we on back roads?" She said, "No, we're on the highway." said, man, they didn't miss a chug hole. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets, gets there and they, those doctors said, fuck, we got to redo all the tests. <clears throat> Wind it down. We just get started. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we, we get back. You know, Henry, Henry's got a process and he got a lot of sleep that night. Sure, and I didn't get any. And uh, he gets going. He got David as his helper this day. But you don't catch up with Hurricane Henry, you just get out of his way. Because uh, he's run over me a couple of times, turning around real fast. So I've learned with Henry's work and just whatever you need, tell me to get it and I'll get it. So I would basically go for it. You know, whatever he said we needed, I got. And uh, about three days later, he was beginning to take shape. We had another man from another crew. He comes in, he said, Y'all need some help? I said, yeah. He said, I'm a drywall guy. I said, oh, come here. <laughs> we put you to work right now. So he did a lot of the drywall work in there. And so uh, they went home the next morning. And Henry built the cabinet outside, put all the tile on it. Well, I'm inside doing all the, the finish uh, trim work. And we get this done, and here we are. We look at it's five o'clock, we're out of time. So another group comes in, the guy says, uh, I got four construction guys coming uh, later. I said, oh good, you come around here and I'll show you what we need to do. And Henry lined him out exactly what to do. And I don't know if the pictures are, the finished pictures are up there yet. Okay, this is what it ended up like with the grace of God helping us out. But Satan fought his every tooth and nail all along the way. And we were really, as David put it, the thing that impressed him, I think, the most was the spiritual side of this trip. That we had Bible studies at 8 o'clock in the morning and 8 o'clock at night. And the Lord was somehow always gave me or someone else the verse that really fit today. And... Uh, even as far as having to preach to another crew. I told you it'd take more than five minutes. <laughs> okay. But how is Granny B? Uh, I don't have any time left. She's fine. She's home. She's, she's doing home great. Doing good. Okay. She good. just gotta chew her food really slow. Okay. <laughs> So she really needs to be on a liquid diet. For She'll a while. be ready for us at Christmas. So how's
your story
be seated. Oh, that got me choked up. Oh, <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> But uh, death is defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the atoning work of Jesus Christ and His sacrificial death has paid and covered our sins, right? And, and that work is finished. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, He meant it was completed. His offering was enough to satisfy all that you and I owe because of our sin debt. Christ paid it in full. It is finished. Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's go to the prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, uh, God, just for that truth, that reality. God, the gift of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel that is the power of God unto salvation for anyone who would believe, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Lord, we understand and know God, there's no other way uh, to you except through Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one will enter into the Father except by me. So, Father God, we are so thankful that Jesus chose willingly to place himself on that cross in our place, Lord, to pay our debt for the Lord God. Thank you. Uh, Father God, we are thankful for your continued provision and faithfulness towards us in all things, God. We understand and know that everything that we have is a gift from you, God. And, and Father, today as we come now and we give of our tithes and offerings, Lord, uh, we just pray that you would bless it, multiply it, God. Use it, God, for your kingdom work. Uh, God, just pray for your wisdom, counsel, and direction, Lord, as we seek your heart and your will for all things, Lord. Just lead us. Father, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Alright, so we're going to go ahead and dismiss our children next door for Children's Church. That is 5th grade, kindergarten, kindergarten through 5th grade. Um, and we also are going to have uh, nursery provided next door as well. So uh, Nikki's going to take the, the uh, Children's Church kids this week. Uh, this is Sherry's week to, to be here uh, in service with us to, and to set through the service. And, you know, I'm, I just want to say, Sherry... Um, how appreciative we are of the hard work that you put into Children's Church. and It's been truly a blessing, so thank you for that. Uh, how are we this morning, church? Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Man, man, that's the kind of response I like. <laughs> you know, sometimes I ask that and I get one or two people, yeah, I'm doing okay, I'm, you know, it's been okay week. But, uh, I'm, not, I'm not satisfied with that because I know that Every day is a gift from God. Okay? Amen. So every day we have something to be thankful for. Amen. So, uh, so today we're going to kind of wrap up the book of Jonah today. Okay, So we're going to be in chapter 4. We're going to work our way through uh, all of chapter 4. Um, and I am going to touch Tom. I always give him a hard time about this because he knows I always like to go, kind of go back, you know, and... and, and uh, uh, to, uh, and, and, and so that we can have some context, right? We want to know, right, that... Uh, that what we're studying, what we're going through, right? Uh, we want to know what God's purpose is for it, right? And what it means to us. Uh, because what it meant for them is what it means for us. It has not changed, okay? Uh, God's Word is eternal. It's, it's unchanging and uncompromising. God has said it, therefore it is, okay? Uh, so we're going to be in Jonah chapter 4 today, but I do want to read to you uh, verse 3. Uh, but before we... Go any further, uh, I do want to take a moment just to stop and pray um, and just ask for God's leading, okay? So if you'll bow your heads with me just for a moment. Heavenly Father, again, Lord, Lord, we're just so thankful for the opportunity to be here this morning. Lord, thankful. Uh, God, I'm thankful for this group of people who decided to come this morning to show up here, Lord. And we know, God, that nothing is by happenstance, Lord. Uh, God, it's through your providential plan, Lord. And we, we just thank you that you have us here this morning. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, that we know that you are here with us, Lord. We're two or three are gathered in your name. There you are in their midst, Lord. And, and Father, we know your presence is with us, Father. And, and our desire, Lord, is just as Moses has said, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, then we're not going, Lord. Uh, so, Father, we just want to pray that, you're, uh, that you would speak to us today, Lord, that you would open our hearts and minds, God, to you. Uh, I ask, Lord, that you would just remove any distractions uh, that we might have brought into this place with us, Lord, uh, whether that be from past events of this last week, Lord, or even this morning. God, we just ask that you would just move that out of the way, Lord. Uh, God, I ask for myself, Lord, that you would set me aside. Lord, just use me as your vessel, Lord. Uh, Lord, just your Holy Spirit lead here today, Lord. We know that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth that He takes from you and brings it to us. And God, we need to hear from you today. Uh, Lord, so we thank you for your presence here tonight, so this morning, Lord. We give you all praise, honor, and glory. Uh, Lord, you are the only one worthy of that. So God, we give it all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at verse 10 briefly, alright? But kind of recapping what we looked at last week in chapter 3. 
we've seen that Jonah, uh, after in chapter 2, when he was spit out by the, by the great fish, right? And, and uh, in chapter 3, we see that, that God commissioned him once again, gave him the same message that he gave him in chapter 1, go to Nineveh, right? Uh, tell them that I see their wickedness, I see their condition, and, and, to, teach, and to go preach to them a, a message of repentance, right? To turn uh, their, or change their direction. The direction that they were going uh, was going to lead to their destruction. God's judgment was turned against them. And, and God, God's message to them through Jonah was repent, turn, turn back to me, right? Or turn to me. And we see that happen in chapter 3. Jonah was obedient where he first fled the presence of God. Now he was in obedience to the Lord and, and doing what the Lord had condi- uh, uh, commanded him to do was to, was to go to Nineveh and to preach to Nineveh. And Jonah did that in chapter 3. Uh, and we also see that there was repentance uh, on, on, on behalf of the Ninevites. In fact, all of Nineveh, it says, from the greatest to the least, right, repented to the Lord. And, uh, and, and we see that very clearly in verse 10. And verse 10 is going to kind of lead us into chapter 4. Uh, but verse 10 says, Then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that He had said He would bring upon them, and He did not do it. Okay? So we see God's response to their repentance is that He, he relented from doing them harm. In other words, He turned His wrath, His judgment, away from Nineveh because of their repentance. But we're going to see Jonah's response to this now. And uh, in verse 1, it says, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. What displeased Jonah? That they repented. (laughs) Right? And that God showed them mercy. And he relented from doing them harm. In fact, when it says here in verse 1, And he became angry, who do you think he was angry at? He was angry at God. Right? Because God didn't do what he thought God should do. Right? So... Jonah's response was he was exceedingly angry towards God because because of why? Well, because he understood, right, the character of God, the nature of God, who God was. It wasn't that he didn't have a knowledge of who God was. He just didn't want to be in agreement with God at this time, right? He did, he thought that Nineveh deserved God's judgment and wrath. And in reality, church, the truth is we all deserve God's wrath and judgment. Every single one of us, right? Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us there's none righteous, no, not one. In fact, the Old Testament says that all of our righteousness is filthy rags toward it, to the Lord. That means that we can't measure up, measure up in our own in our own flesh, in our own works. There's no way. No way, right? That's why the gospel is the gospel of grace and not of works, right? And if you live by the law, you will be judged by the law. See, we can't live up to that standard. The Bible tells us that if we desire to keep all the law, but we stumble at one point, then we're guilty of it all. So, listen, the reality is, yes, we've all been deserving of God's wrath. None of us deserving of His mercy. Jonah just couldn't see that here. He understood the character of God, and we know that to be true because in verse 2, right in verse 2, he says, so he prayed to the Lord. And listen what he prayed. And said, oh, Lord... Was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarshish. For I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. You see, he had the knowledge of God. He understood the character and the nature of God, right? That God's heart was that that Nineveh would repent, right? God's heart was that Nineveh would turn from their wickedness and, and turn to Him. The Bible tells us in Peter, it tells us that God is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And what Peter is talking about is, 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 is God's coming judgment. God has withheld that because He desires that no man would perish. But there, and we're going to see this in a little while, there is a judgment to come. But today is the day of salvation is what the Bible tells us. That today we can repent. Today we can turn to the Lord. And there we would find His grace, His mercy to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all of our iniquities. Because He has paid it all. Just like we just got to finish. His work is complete. There's no other thing that you and I can do to add to the work of Jesus Christ. It is done. 
His sacrifice has paid it all. But here he understood that God was gracious. And that is talking about divine grace. God's grace towards us. And grace is unmerited. Grace is not something that we deserve. That's what grace is. God gives us His grace not because we deserve it or have we have done anything to receive it. It's a gift from God. It's His graciousness towards us. He's gracious and He's merciful. And mercy there means that He, that he, he does not give us what we do deserve. Okay? And, 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 and Jonah's recognizing this. He says, you're slow to anger, meaning that He's patient towards us. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful for the, uh, the long-suffering of God towards us? That He's patient with us? Uh, that He has not given up on us? And here, and He goes on to say, abundant and loving kindness. Can I tell you, the Bible tells us, church, that in 1 John, that it's not that we love God, but that He first loved us. And He gave His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Right? That He would come and He would be the one to make Himself an offering to satisfy the wrath of God turned towards each one of us because each one of us were born with that inherent nature of Adam. Each one of us were born with a sin nature. That's why, you know, you don't have to teach a kid, a little baby, how to rebel against a parent, right? What is the first thing that most children learn, the first word, first word that most children learn? No. No. Right? <laughs> This is that nature of man. But listen, church, there's a remedy for that, for that, and that is Christ and His provision. And then, but he understood that, that God was a God who, who relents from doing harm, meaning that, you know, God had, will turn His judgment away from a people who are guilty before it if they come in repentance and they confess and they say, Jesus, I, God, I want Your mercy. I want Your grace. I need it. So even though he knew all of this, right, he just didn't feel like Nineveh deserved it. Ever been there? Do you think, man, that there's certain individuals that just don't deserve the grace and the mercy of God? Like there's just, they're beyond that, right? Really, do you think you were worthy of it? No. <laughs> do you think Jonah was worthy of it? Well, Jonah's going to find out real quick. Yeah, he was not worthy of it, right? And that's the reality, church, is that the gospel of Jesus Christ, the grace and the mercy of God, is, church, it's for all who will confess Jesus Christ as Lord. The Bible tells us whosoever should, uh, should call upon Him, they would receive their salvation. It's a gift of God. And Paul is, I mean, John is, Jonah is, is resisting this, right? He's so angry. In fact, in verse 4 he says, then uh, in verse 3 he says, Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me. Wow, that's pretty severe, isn't it? I mean, in verse 1 it says, But it, it displeased Jonah exceedingly. That's pretty excessive displeasure. Right? That he's just crying out, God, just take my life from me. I can't handle this reality. Right? I can't handle the fact that these people who are so wicked, we've understood, right? We've looked at Nahum. We see what Nahum says about the, the, about the Ninevites, right? Yeah, they were, they were desperately wicked people. In fact, I did a little more deeper study this past week on, on Nineveh, the Assyrians, and man, they were a wicked people. They did some wicked, horrendous things. In fact, they were so against Israel that we're going to see as, as in just a moment. Like they, they did some horrendous things to the Israelites. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure Jonah had this this idea in his mind because of all that the Ninevites had done, the Assyrians had done to his people. And he's like, man, they don't deserve it, God. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. I mean, so excessive was his displeasure with God that he was, he was saying, Lord, I don't even want to be here anymore. Just take me from here. You ever been so angry with God that you're just done? Done? That's where Jonah was. Jonah was like, I'm just done. I just, I just don't want to go any further. But it says here, he says, it's better for me to die than to live. Finishing up verse 3. In verse 4 he says, then the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? And what he's saying there, is your anger towards me, is that a righteous anger? Is it right that you're angry, angry towards me, Jonah? 
Is your anger justified? And God's going to show them that no, your anger is not justified towards me. It's understandable, right? I mean, some, some horrible things can happen in our life and we have every right to feel hurt and broken because of that. Church, there's mercy and there's forgiveness and the grace of God and it's a very healing power that can be at work in your life no matter where you're at. The very healing thing that you are desperately in need of. And what God is looking for you in response, church, is not that you become angry and mad at Him, but you say, God, I don't know, everybody else, whatever it is, I, it's just me and you here, Lord. Speak to me. I just need you. I need you. But Jonah had hardened his heart towards God. He was angry and God was like, is your anger, is it righteous, Jonah? Is it, a, is it right that you're angry? And then Jonah's response, it says in verse 5, it says, Jonah went out of the city and sat at the east side of the city. I mean, I can almost picture Jonah kind of throwing a little temper tantrum, you know, just pouting all the way there, you know, just... just He's just done with it. He can't handle any more of it, right? And it says, So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the, of the city. There he made himself a shelter and sat under it in the shade uh, till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might uh, be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. You see that? <laughs> Jonah exceedingly angry, displeased with God until God gave him some shade. And then he was deeply grateful for the shade that God had provided for him, Lord. Right? You know, something that caught my attention this past week as I was looking at this is, is in verse 5 we see that, that, um, that Jonah made himself a structure to get shade. Verse 6, we see that God provided a plant for him so that he could get shade. What happened to Jonah's structure? You know, I was thinking, you know, the very fact is, church, is that we can put all of our effort, all of our effort, and we might do well for a while to do for ourselves what, what we're in need of, but church, everything that we do, apart from God, will eventually fall apart. It will. You cannot do it alone. You need the providential hand of God at work in your life. You do. Every single one of us do. None of us can do it apart from Him. I was reminded of what the psalmist wrote in Psalm 91, in verses 1 and 2, where he says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. It's in Him, church. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. He is our God. He is our salvation. And I'm not just talking about our, our, our eternal salvation, but I'm talking about our daily salvation. Right? Every time that you're in need, every time that you need help, where, no matter where it is, the Bible tells us in Hebrews because Jesus has entered behind the veil and He's torn it from top to bottom. He's given us access where we can enter in boldly before the throne of grace and we can find mercy and help for us in our time of need. And you know what it means to enter in boldly? Confidently. Like He has opened up complete access. He has made a way, church, where you and I, where we were once separated from God, Jesus has reconciled us to the Father. And you and I can be able to enter in boldly. We can experience just that grace that we need in that moment of our time of need. There. There. That's, the, that's abiding under the shelter, the refuge of the Almighty God and finding your help in your time of need when you come before God. And you bring your needs to Him. And you say, God, I can't. But I know you can. And you put your trust, your faith in Him. Jonah was grateful for the plant. He was grateful for the plant. Right? Because it brought him some shade and some comfort. And he was grateful for that. But then God, it says, and I love how it says, and the Lord had 
God prepared a plant for him. And then, and then in verse 7 it says, But as morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm. worm. <laughs> Same source, right? Different purpose. You see, the plant provided shade and comfort. And he was appreciative of that. But God sent a worm. And it says, And it so damaged the plant that it withered. I mean, all that he was so thankful to God about, all of a sudden God just kind of took it. Now listen, I want us to remember that God is, is teaching Jonah something here, church. He's, he's showing Jonah something here. Where, where Jonah was angry and mad at God because God had relented to do hard to the Ninevites, God was showing him, He was teaching him here, church. And I, don't, I want us to learn from this today, Right? We know that God's Word goes forth and it accomplishes that for which God sends it forth to do. Alright, I don't, I don't have to sit here and convince you. I don't. The Word of God is powerful enough to do that. But here, church, he says, and it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement heat of uh, east wind and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. That he wished death for himself and said, It is better for me to die than to live. He was grateful for the shade, but whenever God took the shade away, man, he became so in need, right? Desperate. That he was, man, again, just, Lord, take my life from me. I don't know if you've been, ever, ever been desperate before. I have. Have you ever been in a place where you just, like you were at the end of yourself? And can I tell you, that's, it's a scary place to be, but it's a beautiful place to be at the same time. When you come to the end of yourself and you realize that you've been walking in your own power and strength for too long, and you can't do it any longer, and you need God in your life. It's a beautiful thing. But here, Jonah was grateful for the plant until the worm came along and the heat came along and then he was he was he was again angry and in verse 9 it says and God said to Jonah is it right for you to be angry about the plant and he said it is right for me to be angry even to death and that's not a question uh, I mean that was a statement from Jonah. He's like, it is right, even to the point of death. Yes, I am angry, Lord. Can I tell you it's okay to be angry at God? I mean, you can express your anger towards God, but listen, God is not at fault. God is not at fault. I can tell you the very reason that many of us suffer so much hardship in our life is because of the results of sin in our life. Like, like a lot of it, church. I love what what uh, Tozer said. He's like, he's like, I, I, there's so much that we could just prevent if we uh, we could we could let us shorten the length of our travail if we would, but just stop going that direction that way where God is trying to get our attention, turn us the other way. You know, the right response is saying, "Yes, God, I see. I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to turn from that." You know, God's conviction on sin, church, is not. For our destruction, his conviction for our sin is so that we can he can change our direction because he knows that the direction we're going will eventually hurt us. You see, sin is pleasing for a period of time, but there's always consequences for it. Always consequences for sin. And God is like, man, just come my way. Now none of us are without sin. I'm not saying that, but church, listen. We need to take we need to keep short accounts of it. Right? We need to be just we need to be searching after God with all of our hearts, just like the Bible tells us. <laughs> searching after him, searching after him, church. And if you draw near to him, he draw near, he will draw near to you. If you walk in the light as he is in the light, he you're walking with God. And that's where we all need to be. You know what the fear of the Lord is, church, is not this dreadful fear to approach God. The fear of the Lord is that you have a deep respect, a yearning desire. You want to follow God. And here, Jonah is again angry. And he asks him, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And Jonah says, yes, it's right. It is right that I am angry, even to the point of death. 
In the verse 10 it says, But the Lord said, You've had pity on the plant for which you have not labored. I mean, Jonah didn't plant the plant. Did he? I mean, the Bible tells us that God, God, right, made the plant grow and bring shade and comfort to Jonah. He says, nor did you make it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a, in, uh, in, and came up in a night and perished in a night. He's like, you were, you were grateful for that, but you had no participation in that. That was not your provision, that was mine. And you know what the very reality is, is that Jonah didn't deserve that at this time, right? Let's, let's remember where Jonah was right now. Jonah was mad at God. He was angry with God. But yet God provided the plant for him. And then in verse 11, it says, And should I not pity Nineveh? That great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left and much livestock. He's like, you had pity on the plant. You didn't have pity on Nineveh. Over 120,000 people. You were willing to just perish. Church, I understand it. I do. I understand that, man, if you know, you see the depravity in our world today and all that's happening, right? All the destruction and everything, man, it's so easy just to become angry. And I, church, here, Nineveh was worthy of, the, of God's wrath, His judgment. They were. The Assyrians were wicked people. But yet God looked down at Nineveh and says, I see your wickedness. And I'm sending you a messenger. And I'm letting you know if you continue that path in that direction, it'll be for your harm and not your good. But if you turn now, I will relent. Again, church, the day of salvation is today. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. Not next year. Today. But I was also reminded that there is there is a coming judgment of God. There is. In fact, you know, I was doing some deeper study this week on, like I said, on uh, on the Assyrians and, and Nineveh. And the book of Nahum, when the book of Nahum, when Nahum was a prophet in Nineveh, and his very message was to tell Nineveh. That God was coming to judge them. Coming to pour out His wrath on them. Do you know when Nahum was written? Jonah was written between 798 and 793 B.C. Nahum was written between 663 and 612 B.C. That was 140 years after Jonah. So, I mean... And the Ninevites repented. They turned to God. And then when, uh, between uh, then and, and, and Nahum's book, they turned away from God all, all over again. And God eventually did pour out His wrath on Nineveh. In fact, the Babylonians conquered Nineveh and just totally annihilated and destroyed them. You can put it off and put it off. But church, there is coming a day of judgment. And, and God has determined that. He knows the date. He knows the time. We don't. But church, it's coming. And that's why, listen, every day is a day of, of opportunity for us to come to Christ and to, and to say, I accept and I receive your gift because I am in need of it. I know that I'm a sinner lost and I need your mercy. I need your grace. He will not turn you away. There's not a reason to put it off. There's not. He is your ever-present help in time of need. He is. And aren't you thankful that we serve a merciful and graceful God that, that we can bring every need to Him? 
every need, no matter what that is, and to know that God is able, that He is our refuge, He is our fortress, He is our God, in Him we will trust. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? It's a time of invitation as the praise team here plays through this song, but I just want to give you the opportunity. Listen, if God has spoke to you in any way today, I would encourage you don't walk out of these doors not having responded to you in some way. I mean, there's power in coming forward and, and making it known to God, but there's just as much power available to you right where you stand. You can make it known to God and He will hear you. And if you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, come and talk to me. Let me share, you, share with you the good news. The good news of Christ and His faithful provision for us that He sacrificed Himself for us, paid in debt what we owed God because of our sin, because all sin leads to death, is what the Bible tells us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. It's a beautiful thing to receive the mercy and grace of God that's available to, to you here today. And I want to encourage you, if that's you this morning, don't walk out these doors not having come and talk to me. And if there's anything else that you're struggling with, any other need that you need, I'll be here to pray. Others will be here to pray. Listen. But you can come and you can bring it before God. And you can know that God hears you. Would you please come?
church. Uh, so we uh, next week is the big event, all right? So I want you to man be planning for that. Uh, bring your family, bring your friends, okay? Uh, get the word out there. Uh, we really want this to be a, a time of outreach and just a you know. Uh, and, and the ultimate goal, like I keep saying, is not, listen, that we're just giving them knowledge of, 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 the, of the Feast of Israel, but that we point them to Christ in it, because that's what the feasts do, okay? Uh, it points us to Jesus, and I just, that's the goal, all right? To share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, so just be praying about that. I hope that you have been praying about that. Um, but we just need to keep that in prayer and be here. Um, you know, we have the, the booths taken care of, the people there that's going to man the booths, but we're, there's lots to be done, okay? Uh, so if you want to just come and participate and be helped, you know, there we'll put you to work somehow, okay? Uh, there will be plenty to do, all right? Uh, yeah, I think that's it. We're going to have um, a short meeting after this uh, for those who are... Uh, participating in in, um, in the booths. And if you want to be here just to get more information about what we're going to be doing, I want to welcome you to stay. There will be lunch provided next door. Uh, so, what yeah. time are we going to start setting up? Uh, that's a good question. All right, so I think it's going to take it's going to take some time because we you know we have all the booths to set up and decorate that day. So I mean, the events at two, so it's going to be pretty early. I'm thinking, you know, maybe you know. Maybe I at know, least by lunch. Me, it's five o'clock in the morning. So. Well, I know. Uh, we're not going to go that early. <laughs> so, uh, but we'll determine all of that. You know, um, uh, I would ask, I would ask uh, um, Haley, but she's not here right now. So, uh, but yeah, okay. So stick around if you can. All right. Uh, how about a one, two, three? Hallelujah! This morning we'll dismiss. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.